Hello, my name is Aviva, and today I'm going to be doing a chapter by chapter recap reading vlog for Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, which is the second book in the Blood and Ash series by Jennifer L. Armitrout. So I actually just finished reading From Blood and Ash, which is the first book in the series, and I did an entire chapter by chapter recap for this book as well. So if you wanted to check that out, make sure to check the link in the bio. But this vlog is going to be very reviewy because I've read this series before, I really enjoyed it, but I need to remember everything that happened in this world before I jump into the fourth book that's coming out later this week. So I'm going to be reading this. I'm going to be telling you everything important that happened as we go along through the story. I'm going to probably jump on here a couple of times and just go through a bunch of chapters at once. And, you know, we'll get to experience the book together. We're going to see as things progress, we're going to figure things out slowly but surely together. So I'm going to get started on reading this and I will come back when I'm a couple of chapters in. The next day. So yesterday I ended up getting 200 pages in as well as to chapter 14. So we have a lot of catching up to do. But before I get into the video, make sure to give it a like as well as subscribe if you're not already subscribed. But with that said, we had ended off book one where we're still at the Haven's Keep. We find out that Hawk is really Prince Castile. And then at the end of the book, Cass basically announces at dinner that he's going to be bringing Poppy home so that they can get married. So that's literally where book one ended off. I'm not going to give you guys any more of a refresher because if you do want to know you know a lot of details about book one just watch my chapter by chapter recap again link in the description below so we pick up with book two in chapter one exactly where we left off we're still sitting at the table and poppy is thinking how Cass is crazy for thinking that she's going to marry him and she actually voices her opinions we also get a really good refresher of everything that did happen in book one we get a lot of like really big points just in case you weren't reading them back to back and then at the end of that chapter one of the wolvens basically doesn't like what Cass Cass is wanting to do by bringing her home and marrying her. So he basically, you know, voices his opinion. He insults Poppy Scar and then threatens to kill her. So Cass ends up killing him. And then in chapter two, Cass basically says to Poppy that there is no side of you that is not as beautiful as the other half. Not a single inch isn't stunning. That was true the first time I said it to you and it's still the truth today and tomorrow, which I just thought was so cute. So I wanted to share with you. But then in that chapter, we also get to meet Alistair, who is the advisor to the king and queen. And he's basically like an uncle to to Prince Castile. And then Kieran ends up walking Poppy to her rooms and says that she smells like death, which I thought was very random at the time, but I feel like it's going to make sense later. So I'm pointing it out. And then he also um, says how he knows that no other Atlantean alive today has the same powers as Poppy, which is a very interesting note to know. And then Karen tells us that the gods are real and they're the Atlantean gods, not the Ascended gods, and that they are actually sleeping. So, you know, I know that a lot of this world is about the gods. So I thought that was very important to point out. So we move into chapter three and Poppy decides that she needs to get to her brother, Ian, who might not even be her full brother because we're not sure about like how Poppy is Atlantean. So he like obviously is either not her brother, maybe her half brother. Like we're starting to get very confused as to what Poppy's lineage is, but she knows that she has to get to Ian anyway. So she decides to pick the lock of her door and sneak out, but Cass and Kieran end up catching her when she is running away in the woods. So so then in chapter four, Cass and Poppy end up fighting a little bit and then they quickly kiss before they get attacked by some craven. So then in chapter five, they go back to the keep and Poppy takes a bath, falls asleep, and then Cass comes into her rooms at some point and she throws her knife at him. I like pointing out when she gets really violent with him because obviously Cass really enjoys it and I don't know, I like seeing it, you know what I mean? Anyway, we find out that the Atlanteans actually have hot water and showers and that everybody in their territory has electric because, you know, the Atlanteans, they were trying to like, you know, uh, keep everybody quiet and like thinking about other things. So they're very behind like technology wise, but Atlanteans, they've got normal stuff going on, which is very cool. So anyway, let's move on. Um, but we do also find out that Atlantia is running out of space. That's one of their biggest issues at the moment. They have so many people and they need more land. And um, then Cass basically tells Poppy that his middle name is Hawk, which was really important because not a lot of people know Atlantean's middle names. So like it, he was basically telling her so that she knows that Hawk wasn't a fake person. Like Cass and Hawk, they're the same person and that Hawk is really her, um, his middle name and that, you know, only people who are very close to him actually call him that. And then we move on to chapter six and Poppy and Cass are talking in bed and Cass says that he didn't kill or even know the first maiden, which I think is very interesting because like we're, you know, we're still very confused about what, what, what happened there, but you know, Cass isn't lying. So that's that. 
And then where were we? Okay, so then the Atlanteans um, need other Atlanteans blood to survive. So I guess we're getting a little bit more information about what we need to know. So Atlanteans need other Atlanteans blood to survive. And that is why the Ascended needed Poppy for her blood to keep Castile's brother alive because Castile's brother is being held captive there so that they can make more Atlanteans with his blood. So they either needed her to keep the brother alive or they needed her to use her own blood to make more vampires slash ascended so one way or another she was very important to them because she did have atlantean blood and the reason why the ascended waited for poppy to turn 19 is because that is the year that the atlanteans go through the culling and her blood wouldn't have been useful to them until she matured and started getting all of her powers and checking everything like that so then at the end of that chapter they end up going to sleep in the same bed and then in chapter seven poppy has a nightmare of the night that her parents died and then you know um castile basically comforts her so it was like a nightmare scene you know what i mean and then um castile basically tells her a little bit about the time that he was captured and held captive and he did this to explain to her that you know he had nightmares too for a very long time after that happened so it's very normal for her and that she shouldn't feel embarrassed or anything like that then we move into chapter eight and De Delano is keeping watch over Poppy's door the next morning and he thought that he heard her screaming. So he like runs into the room and he's like, are you okay? But she wasn't screaming. She was just like screaming in her head. So, you know, that happened. And then um, Kieran ends up coming to take her for lunch and we learn a little bit more about the Atlanteans and their bloodlines. So we learn that the, the elemental bloodlines are people who are purely Atlantean. They can be traced back to the Deities who are the children of the gods and then there are also like half Atlanteans who are half mortal and half Atlantean and then there are also like people like changelings who are offsprings of deities and woven and like they have special powers as well but like they're not really around anymore and there are also a lot more type of Atlanteans but most of them are now extinct and depending on how Atlantean you are you might be mortal after your culling or you might need blood after your culling or you you not you know you might need like you might end up getting things you might not like it just depends on what your lineage is but you might end up getting certain powers you might not and then whatever after we get all of that information we end up bumping into Alistair and he refers to the ascended king and queen as the blood crown which I thought was very oddly fitting and they thought it too but you know it made sense anyway um the whole time Poppy is trying to figure out her lineage and how she's Atlantean so like that's why we had that conversation with Kieran because she's still trying to figure out like you know is she going to to be immortal after she turns 19 like what is up with her because you know she only just found out that she's Atlantean so anyway we move into chapter nine and Kieran ends up confirming that um Cass can scent her when she is aroused so she gets very embarrassed by this because obviously she can't help it but now Cass kind of knows what she's thinking a lot of the time and then Cass comes and takes her to that place underground where the families pay respect for everybody that they lost like the ascended and everything so it was very like you know intense scene over there and then we move on to chapter 10 and Cass explains why he wants to marry her they have a very like in-depth conversation about it and it was basically so that she can be free safe from the ascended that want to take their revenge to the atlanteans out on her because she is basically a symbol of the atlanteans and also to help her prove to the entire kingdom of solace like that everything that they believe in is a lie so he had a lot of really good points as to why he wants to marry her but the entire time we are getting the vibe that like he's holding something back and i just know that he's holding back that he really wants to marry her because he loves her and even some more stuff but we're not going to get into that and until we find it out for ourselves. So anyway, that is what we found out in chapter 10. And then in chapter 11, Kieran comes and takes Poppy to breakfast the next day and tells her how he is bonded to Cass and he's been bonded to him since birth. And that's obviously why they're very close. We kind of knew this, but anyway, Kieran finally confirms it. And then Castile and Alistair comes into breakfast and Castile announces that Poppy has accepted their engagement. So it's a really big deal. And then basically in chapter 12, Alistair asks to speak with Poppy alone and he tells her how Cass was once in love and engaged to his daughter and that's one of the reasons why he's very skeptical 
about like you know Cass saying that he wants to marry Poppy because like you know he's seen Castile in love before and like you know he's very like you know territorial because he was almost about to be his um son-in-law you know what I mean and then anyway he also offers her that if she wants to escape that he will help her because you know if she's going into this marriage against her will then he is able to get her out and Castile or and the like ascended will never find her if she wants it but she turns him down and then in chapter 13, Poppy and Kieran end up hanging out in the library and Poppy finds this very old book that mentions a lot of different types of old Atlanteans. So we get a little bit of an info dump here and honestly, a lot of it went over my head, but I tried to catch a couple of, you know, key points. So um, they mentioned in this little book that there were Wyvin Wyvin, Wyrin. I, I don't know if I'm saying the name right, but they mentioned that there were Wyrin, Kareens, Centurions, Empaths, and Dracon. And Dracon happened to be um, another type of Atlantean that supposedly now rest and protect the gods. And I recognize the name because I know we're going to see it later. But anyway, we basically learn a lot about different types of Atlanteans that are mostly extinct now. And Kieran happens to touch Poppy's arm and he feels like as if he got like, you know, lightning. He got like struck by lightning. So that was just something to point out because obviously, you know, Poppy's, you know, gifts are changing right now. But anyway, Kieran ends up leaving and Cass comes in and we learn a little bit more about the war between the elementals and the deities from a very long time ago. Cass basically explains to her how, um, you know, the elementals tried to kill all the deities and almost all of them were killed eventually. And that's, that's when Cass's bloodline took over and that his father was a deity. I think his father was a deity, but like the king was a deity. And then he mentioned, and then like Copy is thinking about like, oh my God, Cass's mother was married to a deity. So I, I think that that was Cass's father but honestly it wasn't very clear I told you there was a lot of information in chapter 13 and I had a hard time following it all but anyway Kath kind of explains how he believes that she is the descendant of an empath line because her powers are very similar to that and then that is kind of where I ended off you know at the moment and we were about to get attacked by the um Atlanteans like they were about to show up at the Haven's Keep so I kind of like stopped there for the moment but I got to admit that at the 200 page mark I feel like not a lot has happened but also Poppy has come around a lot to you know being comfortable around Cass and all of the changes that are happening and also like her relationship with Cassian and Kieran have changed a lot because there has been a lot of like you know small conversations and interactions between all of them so like I didn't really like point them out specifically but Cass and Poppy and Kieran they have been interacting a lot throughout the 200 pages and we're slowly seeing you know Poppy's walls break down for Cass and stuff along those lines but besides for that I feel like you know not that much has happened but it's okay because it's been enjoyable until now now. But anyway, I'm going to keep reading and I'll update you when I am a ton more chapters in. A little later. So I just got to page 280 slash chapter 20. So we're almost halfway through, not really, but we're about to start heading towards Atlantia. We're finally leaving Haven's Keep, so I thought it'd be a good time to tell you what has been going on. So we jump into chapter 14, and obviously the Ascended show up, so we meet Lord Cheney and a bunch of royal guards, and obviously they're looking for Poppy. So Castile ends up taking her into the woods so that they can hide. But then when Lord Cheney starts killing people, Castile ends up leaving her, and you know, they basically all start a fight. So then in chapter 15, Poppy basically gets to really see in like her own eyes how horrible the Ascended really could be because they're being very, very vicious and everything like that. And like she never actually got to see them act the way that they naturally are. Sort of so, so it was very eye-opening for her. And then anyway, she ends up going in and helping with the fight, but then she gets hit on the back of the head and Lord Cheney takes her. So then she wakes up like an hour later in their chariot and Lord Cheney basically tells her that, you know, she's much more important than she she even realizes but he doesn't elaborate on that and then he ends the chapter with biting her so then we get into chapter 16 obviously poppy is fighting back and then castile ends up showing up and saving her and he was very concerned about her which i don't really understand why she hasn't caught on to the fact that like he's in love with her yet because like it's been so obvious like we keep seeing so many little moments like he's so concerned about her right now and like he's just being so tentative and like we can see that he is obviously in love with her and is very 
very happy to be marrying her for more than just like the reasons that he originally said, but like she hasn't caught on yet. I know it's going to happen like really soon, but my point is, is like there has been so many signs all throughout the beginning of this book and yet she's being so oblivious to it. And I'm just like, why? But anyway, besides for that, um, we find out that Cass actually gave um, Poppy some of his blood again because he was really concerned about how, you know, hurt she got at the time when, you know, she was taken. And anyway, she wakes back up and, you know, they're back at the keep and we find out actually that it's forbidden for Cass to give her and anybody like some of his blood, like ascendant, like uh, Atlanteans are not allowed to share blood. It's very forbidden, but Cass is doing it anyway, obviously because he very much cares about Poppy and he doesn't want her to die. So very interesting moment over there. But anyway, we move on to chapter 17 and then Poppy wants to go and help the wounded. So on their way there, they actually run into the blood tree that popped up when Poppy was injured in the fight. So like, you know, she got injured, she spilled some of her blood. And then by the time she got back there, a blood tree actually popped up into his place, like a fully formed tree. And everybody thinks that it's actually an omen from the gods that even though they're still sleeping, they are signaling that great change is coming. So very interesting stuff. But anyway, we then go and Poppy helps the wounded and they are all very much in awe of her power. And then after that, we find out a little bit more about the empaths, which are Poppy's possible ancestors. And we find out how they used to be able to like siphon off energy from people like by taking their emotions. And they were very, very strong and therefore they were very, very feared. And they used to be called like the soul eaters. So it's not like necessarily the best ancestors to possibly have. But anyway, after we find out a little bit about that, which was at chapter 17, if you want to look a little bit more into it, if I wasn't like like clear enough. But anyway, after that, Castile ends up pulling her into the pantry and asks her if they can pretend that they're just Poppy and Hawk when they're alone. And obviously she's going to say yes. So then in chapter 18, we get that really good makeout session in the pantry and then Cass stops it before it gets too far. And then he ends up bringing her to the dungeon so that she can kill Lord Cheney herself. Like he like wanted to give her a present. So that was her present. And then after that, we're in the library with Kieran and Poppy asks a little bit more about their bond. So we find out that it basically requires Kieran to obey and protect Cass at all costs, like even at the cost of his own life. And we also find out that they can't necessarily read each other's thoughts, but they can sense each other's emotions. And if Cass is hurt, then he can pull energy from Kieran. So when Cass was taken for five decades, Kieran ended up getting very, very sick for the entire time because Cass was like feeding off his energy sort of thing. Anyway, we moved into chapter 19 after we got all of that information. And it's it starts off with Poppy waking up from a nightmare and Castile is next to her. So then, you know, she's all nervous and whatever, and he ends up helping her fall asleep by doing a little bit more pretending with his fingers. And then we end that chapter with them heading out of, you know, the place that they're at and they're going to start their journey to Atlantia. So that's all I know for now. And um, I'm going to keep reading and I'll update you guys when I get further into the book. The next day. Hello, it is now Monday and the new release is coming out on Thursday. So I only have a couple of days left to finish book two and then head on and read book three. But I'm doing really good timing because last night I got to page 387 slash chapter 27, which means that I'll most probably be able to finish this today and then move on to the next book tomorrow. But my point is, is that we have some catching up to do. So we have left off um, at chapter 19 where everybody was leaving the Haven's Keep. And so now in chapter 20, we're on our way to Spess's End. And Poppy wasn't really so sure how she's supposed to be acting because there are a lot of people around. She's like, not sure how to act like a fiance sort of thing, you know? So her and Cass end up having a very long conversation about relationships and, you know, her time as the maiden and things along those lines. And then a couple of days into their trip, they end up getting attacked by the Dead Bones clan. So in chapter 21, Castile ends up getting shot a few times, but more or less they end up killing everybody. And then at the end of the fight, Poppy ends up seeing Kieran naked because he had turned into a wolven for the fight. So it was a very like funny moment. But anyway, they end up keep on going and they finally reach Pompeii, which is a haunted empty city that the Ascended had ruined a couple of decades ago. They came in, they killed everybody and they turned the base down so that the Atlanteans couldn't get um, any use out of it. Like they were just, they didn't want to use it because it was like too far away from like, you know, their capital, but they didn't want the Atlanteans to have it either. So they just like ruined the whole thing instead, which is like, come on assholes. But anyway, 
Chapter 22. The next day, we end up getting to Spessa's End, which is also a ruined city, but the Atlanteans have been slowly rebuilding it, so there are a couple of people there. That's when we meet Quentin, who is one of, you know, the Atlanteans that had just gone through the Kong, so he's like a very young kid. And then we also meet Beckett, who is Alistar's nephew, and he's at the moment having a very hard time switching between, like, you know, being a wolf and being a human, so at the moment he's like a little wolf, and it's very cute. But anyway, um, later we end up getting to the scene where Poppy and Cass are in bed and Cass attacks Poppy because he needs blood. He had just gotten shot and, you know, he was already being a little bit hungry and he hasn't fed in a while. So he ends up attacking Poppy in his sleep sort of thing. So, you know, that moment was at the end of chapter 22, if you wanted to go back to it, because it was kind of like, you know, an intense moment. It was fun to read. But anyway, chapter 23, Kieran and Poppy end up talking the next morning. Well, not the next morning because Kieran had come in right at the end to like save Poppy because she had screamed, but not out of scared. You know what I mean? Anyway, so Kieran ends up coming and Kieran and Poppy end up talking um, about how Cass needs to feed. Like Kieran gives us a lot of really good information and he very clearly points out to her while they're walking on the beach that Cass has feelings for her and she has feelings for him, even though she won't admit it to herself. And then Kieran tells her how when an Atlantean starts to care for someone, they find the idea of feeding from anybody else extremely repellent. So then he also tells her how he thinks that they're heartmates and this is why they felt like they knew each other after only speaking a handful of times. So it was a very like revelation filled chapter. If you want to go back to it, it was like, I thought it was a really good conversation. And I'm just like, yeah, why um, does Kieran realize this? Well, he realized this because he's bonded to Cass, but like, I don't understand why like Poppy hasn't like caught on to this yet. But anyway, it was very good for Poppy to hear all of those stuff. So that happened in chapter 23. And then in chapter 24, we hear a little bit about the mist and how they're going to have to pass through it. And it's like magic from the gods. And it's kind of like an alarm system to like keep everybody out of Atlantia sort of stuff. So we just get to hear about it uh, very quickly. And then honestly, Alistar really pissed me off in this chapter because he starts to talk to Poppy about like, you know, the whole Spessa's end place and how it was like, you know, Cass's idea and Poppy didn't know about this. And he's like, well, wouldn't have Cass told you that because like, you know, you guys are like supposed to be married and supposedly you're really close and like, she was very embarrassed that like she didn't know about that but like Alistair was like trying to point out some stuff and like was wondering why Poppy isn't aware of all of this stuff you know and he also tells her about the joining which is when a bonded elemental takes a partner and extends you know his bond to that person so they have like you know a blood exchange between the elemental the bonded and this new person that's coming in to the group and it will end up making her immortal by tying her life to the woven and the elemental that she's bonding with which basically means that if Poppy wants to be immortal she can do the joining with Kieran and um, Cass and then she can live as long as they live and I just really didn't like how Alistair was telling her all of this like trying to cause problems in the relationship like yes Cass maybe should have told her but like we understand in like afterwards why he didn't really tell her any of this but my point is, is that Alistair started to really piss me off at that scene like in chapter 24 so anyway we end up moving on to chapter 25 and we find out that Alistair is 800 years old and he was the bonded woven to King Malak who warned the queen of about what Malik had done all the way back when by making, you know, Isbeth a uh, vampire and all that sort of stuff. So then after all of that stuff happened, Castile ends up coming back and apologizes to Poppy. And then Poppy tells him that she cares about him and he and convinces him to feed off of her. So it's a very good chapter if you want to go back and skim around. That was chapter 25. But in Chapter 26, Kieran basically comes and joins them because Cass is scared that he's going to get out of control. So after Cass feeds, Kieran ends up leaving and thanks Poppy in a very, very nice way. And then they get into bed and Cass asks if they can pretend a little bit longer and then she lets him. So, you know, chapter 25, chapter 26, that was the Kieran, Cass, Poppy scene if you wanted to go back and check it out for yourself. But basically, that is kind of where I left off for now. So I'm going to keep reading. I really want to finish this today. So I'll come back when I'm more chapters in. Many hours later. So I know it looks like I haven't moved at all. And the truth is, is that I haven't. I've been sitting here for the past couple of hours and I actually finished this entire book. So we have a lot to go through and I shouldn't waste any more time because we're going to be here for a while as it is. So we had ended off at chapter 26 where Cass asked if they could pretend for a little bit longer. He had just finished feeding off of her and doing that whole scene. So we come back with chapter 27 and they just woke up from their nap. And Cass asks if he can take Poppy to the real Spessa's end and if they can pretend for 
for a little bit longer when they're out and about for the rest of the day. And she says yes, so he kisses her. And then they end up heading towards the stables because Cass also wants to teach her how to start riding her own horse. So they go to get some horses and they run into the stable guy, the guy that like, you know, runs the stables or whatever. And he ends up touching Poppy and then he gets that like static electricity sort of thing. And I just wanted to point it out because like we keep seeing that happening and you know, we don't really know what's up with Poppy's powers because they keep developing. So that happened. And then they end up going for their ride and Cass basically tells Poppy how he used to come here all the time when he was younger with Kieran and his brother. And like, that's kind of when he started to get the idea that he wanted to like develop Spess's end as like more Atlantean places to live sort of thing. So we kind of have like, you know, a little conversation there and then they end up getting to the spot that Cass wanted to show her, like all of the houses that they're being built and all like the little farmland sort of stuff and everything like that. So then in chapter 28, we actually get to see Karen again and Poppy is all embarrassed because of what happened that morning, like, you know, when they had their little situation thing going on. And then we end up meeting Karen's sister who is named Violetta, also known as like Netta, they call her both things. But anyway, we end up meeting the sister and then she kind of gets that weird static electricity shock thing too when she greets Poppy. And, you know, just another thing to point out. And then they also point out how she smells like death. Like Netta also smells that like Poppy smells like death. And we had originally seen that when we were you know in the beginning of this book and Kieran had snipped Poppy and was like oh you smell like death so just something to point out because they're all trying to like figure out like what she's from and then Cass is like oh well your blood tastes old also it kind of smells like you know very old and it tastes extra potent and it's probably because of your bloodline and then they're in the middle of talking about that and then all of a sudden they hear a crash outside so then when they find out that Beckett had fallen and he broke his legs and he was like in his woven form and that's a really big deal because if he doesn't like change right away then like he can like basically lose his leg so poppy tries to help him and she uses her powers she touches him and all of a sudden her hands start to glow and then all of a sudden she's glowing and her hands are getting warm and like her her powers are getting out of control and then in chapter 29, Beckett basically switches back to human form and all of a sudden his legs are healed. And obviously Poppy did that with her powers. So then they kind of like confirm that she's an empath because she can relieve people's pain, she reads emotions, and now she also heals people, which were all empath traits. So anyway, we end up like, you know, finishing up that scene and then Cass and Poppy are talking and they kind of discuss how they can get married at Spess's End because it's officially Atlantean soil ever since they took it back. So then Poppy basically agrees agrees that yes, she will marry him here at Spess's end. So then we move into chapter 30 and then all of a sudden like Alistair appears and he starts to like, you know, make trouble of being like, oh, well, you're going to get married without the king and queen's permission. Like, you know, he starts to like talk about stuff like that. And we also get to notice how like Poppy's emotion, like she's starting to be able to read people's emotions without even trying. So like we just get to see more and more how her powers are developing. Like she was in a room full of people, like when she was talking to Alistair and she just, she noticed that. But then anyway, after that, Cass ends up taking Poppy to the Poppy fields and he brings her to the caves that we originally heard about in book one and he says how like these caves are connected to the ones that he used to look at with his brother like all that long ago and there's like ways that it connects through the mountains but they never like actually found the trail whatever we talk about the caves for a little bit but they end up going into the caves and they find the hot spring and then Cass asks if they can pretend for a little bit longer while they're like getting into the hot spring and then Poppy finally says I don't want to pretend I'm Poppy and you're Castile and this is real so then in chapter after 31 we end up getting that sex scene and like you know it's the first time that they had sex ever since she had stabbed him and they had sex in the forest whenever that was maybe it was at the beginning of this book was it at the end of book one I don't even remember but this was the first time that they actually had sex since then and then after that Kieran basically comes back and brings them fresh towels well he doesn't come back he basically comes and brings them fresh towels and fresh clothes because like Kieran knew that like they'd be able like he'd be able to find them there so whatever that happens and then it kind of like the miscommunication with them kind of like starts up again all of a sudden like Cass was like oh don't worry like this will stay here like I know that like you know we're not going to continue this like as we get out even though like you know it, it, like Poppy kind of wanted that and then she gets all confused again and I'm just like oh stop doing that you know like just tell each other how you really feel but whatever it happened and that is that so then they end up going to dinner and Alistair tries to stir up trouble again by telling Poppy that Cass has actually promised to marry somebody else so then in chapter 32 we find out that Cass's father wanted him to marry this woman named Gianna to try and like 
you know, fix the rift that happened between like the Atlanteans and the Wolven because like half of the Wolven are dead after the war or something like that. And then Jasper shows up who happens to be a Kieran's father. He is the head of, you know, all of the Wolven and like he he's coming because he can help them get married. Like you have to have like the head of a house or something like that, like officiate a wedding. So Jasper is coming for whatever reason, but also he's going to be the one that like, you know, could officiate the wedding. So he shows up in middle of when all of this is happening. And then there's like this entire blow up and like everybody starts talking about like, you know, everybody kind of hates her and how they don't want her to become queen and they don't accept her. And then Poppy ends up giving like this entire speech about like how they got to this point in their relationship. Like she's kind of like very forward of like, well, I was a maiden and this happened and this happened and this happened. And you know, like I've turned over a new leaf sort of thing. Like, you know, I've changed and like, you know, don't think of me as like, you know, one of the ascended sort of stuff. So then Poppy ends up going back to her rooms after she like, you know, does this whole speech of sorts. And we find out that Kieran's mother is pregnant, which I just happened to think was like a very fun fact. So whatever that happened. And then at the end of that chapter, basically Poppy's in her rooms and she realizes that like, all of the like, you know, doors aren't locked. Like they used to lock her in and like she finally realizes like, oh my God, I'm free. Like I can leave if I want to, but like obviously she doesn't want to. So it was kind of like a very like revelation filled moment for her. And that's when she finally realizes that like she's actually in love with Cass. And it only took her 469 pages of him being an absolute sweetheart for her to realize this, but whatever, right? So anyway, we move on to chapter 33 and Castile ends up coming into her rooms later and they have this really heated conversation about like their relationship and everything that's happened and then like you know they were just like they were having a very very good conversation and right before Cass is about to tell her that he is madly in love with her Emil one of the woven basically interrupts them and tells them that the sky is on fire so obviously like you know we can't get like you know a good like I love you I love you moment like we just have to like keep putting like things in the way right so that happens so then we end up moving to chapter 34 and we find out that something is on fire very very far away but they have to send a messenger to like you know figure out what it is that's going on so like Delano and a couple of people get sent and then anyway at that time when they're waiting for like to find out what's actually going on with the sky Poppy and Jasper end up having a conversation and he says that she isn't descended from the empaths because he remembers them because he's very old and basically like very few were able to heal and glow like moonlight the way that she is able to. So he basically just says like, you know, she's a mystery in many ways. And now we're even more confused. Like, well, what the hell is she? You know what I mean? But anyway, we also find out that Gianna is Beckett's cousin and therefore is Alistair's great niece, which I know it's like, you know, I know what's going to happen later on with Alistair. Like, I'm not going to say it yet because we haven't found it out yet. And I'm trying to do a chapter by chapter thing. But like, slowly but surely, Alistair has been absolutely pissing me off. And then finding out that Gianna is his niece and like, he's actually the reason why they're like, you know, they were set up to get married. Like it was Alistair's idea from the beginning. It just, I don't know, it pissed me off for like many reasons. So I'm starting to like not be a fan of Alistair, but whatever. Anyway. That happened. And then anyway, Delano ends up returning and we find out what's up with like, you know, the sky being on fire and everything like that. And he happened to have been very hurt. Like, you know, he was shot in like an hour or something like that. So Poppy ends up, you know, healing him. And like, you know, she does that whole glowing thing again. And then when he comes to and whatever, we find out that, you know, the Ascended are coming. So in chapter 35, we find out that, you know, the Ascended, not only are they coming with like an entire army, but they're also like burning everything down. Like everything that was left in Pompeii, they are burning down they're burning down the forests like you know where we saw the bone clan like the bone clux clan i forgot what they were called but when we where we saw the like the bone people in that forest like they're literally burning down everything and then basically Cass ends up sending it kieran and alistair to go get help in atlantia like they need like you know people to help them because they don't have enough people in asbestos end and he tries to send um poppy as well but she obviously absolutely refuses so whatever anyway the next scene happens like before like you know all of the armies get there Cass and poppy basically have a chance to finish their conversation so we get a very like Akamath chapter 55 moment of like Cass basically going through their entire relationship from the beginning and kind of like saying his side of the story. And he finally tells her how he really feels about her. And then we also get a little bit of information about like Shia, like, you know, the person that he used to love. And we actually find out that Shia gave up Malik in exchange for Cass when they came to free him. Like her and Malik tried to free Cass over and over again. And one day Shia was like captured by some of the and he basically like she basically like gave up 
Malik in exchange for Cass. And then like they got like attacked again. And then basically like Shay didn't very much love him because she basically like, you know, forfeited their lives for herself and therefore um Cass very much felt betrayed so he ended up killing her and that's why he doesn't talk about her because he hates her and he also hates what he did to her and then we also find out that Alistair actually doesn't know that that's how his daughter died like he she do, he doesn't know that like she actually portrayed Cass like he kind of kept it to himself so that he didn't hurt Alistair's feelings but whatever anyway after that Poppy kind of admits that you know she was telling the truth at dinner and she actually you know does have real feelings him so then in chapter 36 after you know um Cass's whole revelation we kind of get Poppy's whole revelation of like her actually telling Cass how she really feels and like admitting her feelings and everything like that so then Cass ends up proposing again officially just like you know do it right this time and then at the end of that chapter Annetta comes in and gives Poppy this dread dress that she can wear to her wedding and she also gets like this diamond necklace because supposedly like you know like diamonds are like joyous tears of the gods and it means that they are with you so it's just like you know a traditional thing to have diamonds at your wedding so anyway that is that so then in chapter 37 we actually get like the entire ceremony they cut their hands and like you know they let the blood drip onto the rings and then you know they're left with this imprint on their hands like a little bit scar that's never going to go away until like one of them dies or they end up like you know getting a divorce or something like that so when that is done the sky ends up turning black and jasper says that it's a sign that nikodos approves of this union and that actually had not happened since cass's parents got Got married hundreds and hundreds of years ago so it's just like another thing of proving that like the gods very much like poppy and everything that's happening between like her and Cass so that happens and then basically they go back to their rooms and they have this conversation about heartmates so there's actually an extremely detailed you know explanation of it on page 532 if you wanted to look it up yourself but it's basically like you know that they're bonded on a different level they're like souls are kind of one split into two that sort of situation and how you become heartmates is basically that like you know you go through these trials and then if you pass then the lover will drink the blood from the other person and then that becomes like the source of that person's life so they kind of like I don't know they pass these trials and then they drink each other's blood and now they're like connected in a special way of sorts and that's actually how the first Atlanteans came to be and how all of the other lines came to be because like let's say like a wolven they ended up like heart mating up with let's say a deity or something and that like like created the changelings like you know you mixed a couple of bloodlines and then all of a sudden you get all of these other very important Atlanteans so that's originally how all of the like you know Atlantean um lines of whatever type of people you want to call it came to be because you know heartmates mating new types of Atlanteans sort of stuff so anyway that is that and it's also it was very much pointed out that like it's extremely rare it does not happen often and it's also usually linked to those who have created something or ushered in a great change and that's actually why it's believed that king malik and isabeth were heartmates because their being like you know their love for each other had started this whole like war that like turned the ascended into what they are and like it was a big change that happened in history and that's why people think that you know king malik and isabeth were most probably heartmates but anyway at the end of that chapter they end up doing the last part of their marriage ceremony which is to drink each other's bloods and they happen to consummate their marriage at the same time so if you wanted to look that up it was in chapter 37 all the way at the end but anyway we move into chapter 38 and the atlanteans arrive and Duch duchess tierman is with them the duchess from book one and then it, they end up talking for a little bit and we find out that poppy's mother was actually the queen's daughter which makes poppy the queen's granddaughter and we're not sure if like you know she's telling the truth because she also says how like the queen isn't actually ascended even though everybody believes that she is so whatever that information was like thrown out there but at the end of this chapter a bunch of like heads were thrown at poppy and cass's feet and it happens to be everybody from new haven like all the people that like you know they had hung out with like all in the end of book one when you know, we were finding out everything that happened, you know, of like Hawk turning into Cass, like everybody that was like in that, like in that part of the book ended up like getting their head chopped off and like we saw them all at their feet. So that kind of like breaks out a huge war. So the entire chapter 
39 is when like all of the fighting basically starts and then in chapter 40 we get the moment where like all of the wolven finally show up and kieran shows up with all of, like you know the atlantean soldiers and then poppy ends up like running to the duchess like she's in her um carriage or whatever and she ends up like killing her and then Cass and poppy end up having like a little bit of a quickie in the carriage because Cass just he couldn't hold himself back you know so then we move into chapter 41 and it's kind of like all over there were a lot of casualties but the atlanteans one so they use like the last ascender like they killed like all the ascenders and they use the last ascender to kind of like send a message to the queen and king of solace that like you know poppy and Cass are willing to talk about them about like the future of their kingdoms if they're willing so that kind of happens and that like poppy ends up helping all the wounded with her healing abilities and then later in that chapter poppy is in the bath and Cass comes in and tells her that kieran and the wolven had heard her screaming for help when you know they were all in the middle of fighting like right before the wolven showed up they showed up because they heard her scream and they actually like switched directions and went to where you know poppy was and it was just something to point out because like obviously like you know uh her her powers keep changing and like that's another trait that isn't very normal to the empaths and then poppy finally tells Cass about what happens like way at the beginning of the book when she kind of did that to like delano because like you know she had screamed out and she didn't scream out she screamed out in her head and delano like rushed into the room and was like oh were you screaming she's like no i wasn't but i guess like you know that happened then and then it happens again now but to all of the woven sort of thing you know so anyway that happened and then we move into chapter 42 and it's the next day and they start heading toward Atlantia and they have to go through the mist and when they're there they see all of like these gold trees that are from the goddess that rest in that mountain so like the same way like there's the blood trees and the blood forest like all the trees have like red uh leaves on it or something like that these trees all have gold leaves on it and then we find out that actually nobody knows where Nykidos is resting because it kind of goes through like a couple of gods and like where they're resting and stuff like that and it just mentions that like nobody knows where Nykidos actually is but anyway Poppy, Cass, and Kieran end up making camp for the night while still in this magical mist of storts and they all end up sleeping together like they don't actually sleep together but like they're sleeping next to each other and like there's a whole moment there so that was at the end of chapter 42 but then in chapter 43 poppy has this crazy nightmare like the nightmare that she always has of the night that her parents died and she finally remembers that somebody else was actually there besides for her parents but she couldn't remember the like you know the person's face like she just remembers that there was actually somebody there was a very vivid dream and while she was dreaming she actually almost like walked off a cliff because like the mists were like playing pranks on them and the goddess, the goddess that sleeps in those mountains actually stopped her. Like she actually like helped her and saved her life. And that was actually a really big thing because it shows that the god, like the gods and all the goddesses, like they actually like, you know, they favor her and everything like that. And it's a really big deal because like that doesn't happen. The goddess was sleeping and you know, the goddess woke up just to save Poppy's life. So then at the end of that chapter, they finally make it to Atlantia. And then in chapter 44, they bump into Alistair right away. And he sees like, you know, they actually went through with it. They got married and he kind of like acts like a dick i'm really not a fan of the guy i just don't like him at all anymore and then um he basically tells them that the king and queen are here and he asks to speak to Cass alone so poppy's like don't worry about it like i'm not insulted even though it was very insulting and um she basically goes with beckett and she heads towards her rooms and then you know when she's going there they basically like take a little bit of a detour and beckett's like oh thank you so much for like you know saving my legs and everything and then she's like don't worry about it and then she basically like turns around all of a sudden like beckett is gone and then like in his place is like a bunch of like really angry citizens like who start to harass her and then like she basically realizes like oh even though Becca just said thank you like he basically like left me here like he knew what he was doing because like they went to like a very specific spot and then, anyway they end up like being really mean to her screaming at her and then they end up throwing rocks at her and she starts to bleed so then in chapter 45 Poppy's powers start to escalate and she like connects to everybody in a way that like she never has before like all of a sudden like these strings kind of pop out between like her and like them somehow how and she kind of like I don't know she does something to them and I'm almost positive that like she kind of like killed all of them like she starts glowing and she like made them like jump around or something I, I was a little bit confused but I'm 99% sure that all of them ended up being killed by her and her powers so then she ends up like turning around and like she sees that like the place where like her blood fell right when they started hitting her with rocks like that there's another blood tree that like you know came sprouting out of the floor and then all of a sudden all the wolven show up and then all of a sudden like Castile is there and then his parents parents are there and like a bunch of familiar faces and then you know as more and more people show up the wolven start to get extremely protective of her and then all of a sudden like Castile gets down on one of his knees and then all the wolven like follow him 
And then the Queen Enola, like, you know, Cass's mother, all of a sudden she like takes off her crown and she's like, lower your swords and bow before the last descendant of the most ancient ones. She who carries the blood of the king of the gods within her. Bow before your new queen. And then the book freaking ends. So that was a lot of information. I know. I hope that, you know, you found that very helpful. I know it was a lot and I wouldn't be surprised if not many people made it to the end of this video. But if you did and you enjoyed it, then I'm very happy to know that I was helpful to you guys because, um, you know, I read the book and I'm happy to just be able to help some people who maybe didn't have the time to read it or just didn't want to do a full reread. But I wasn't planning to really review this book or anything because this was a reread for me um and I very very much enjoyed this book you know the first time that I read it I had originally thought like it was very much like A Court of Missing Fury like so much stuff that happened in this book specifically reminded me of ACMAF and that's why I always say like oh if you're a fan of ACOTAR you should 100% read this series and I still stand by that word because there were so many similarities but the one thing with this book was the second time around was I noticed how much it was dragged out of Poppy trying to figure out how she actually felt about Cass and how long it actually took her to realize that Cass actually feels the way that he does about her. Like this book, for some reason, I didn't think it was going to take that long. And I just completely forgot like that. What's, that's what this entire book was about. Not necessarily that it was like miscommunication. Like I could be having the word wrong, but I felt very much like the, mo the majority of this book was a tad of miscommunication. -y. Like the fact that like, you know, Cass, he didn't really want to tell her how he really felt. So he made up this whole, like, let's pretend sort of thing. Like, let's just be Hawk and Poppy. Like, I don't know. I feel like, you know, if you would have only just like, you know, said something sooner and if Kieran would have like you know spoken up sooner maybe like maybe Poppy would have like noticed that like you know yeah she actually likes him like earlier than we had to but at the end of the day it all like it worked out well like the buildup of the relationship and the buildup of like her slowly realizing how she felt about him and like how everything happened it worked I'm not saying it didn't work but for some reason this time around I felt a little bit more like the new miscommunication feelings than I did the first time I read that so with that said I still thoroughly enjoyed this book I am very happy that I did a full reread of it and I also really did like all of the like the development between all of these characters like Kieran Cass and um, Poppy like I feel like so much of this book was them interacting them having conversations and just seeing their relationship grow in like every sense of the word like you know so much happened between like you know the dynamics of them and I really did enjoy that of it but anyway I said I wasn't going to review so I'm going to stop myself here I do plan to start reading book three tonight and I am going to be doing a chapter by chapter recap for this book as well so if you're watching this the day it came out then this like chapter by chapter recap will be up in a couple of days if you're here not the day that this released then it's probably already up on my channel you can go look for it but anyway um, I'm going to get started on this. I'm going to start a new vlog. So that means I have to say goodbye. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And thank you so much for taking the time and watching my recap for Farm Blood and Ash book too. I almost forgot what the name was. But anyway, you got what I mean. So anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you. And until next time, enjoy reading.